Right, so hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to another session with me, Varun Rao on Tech Tablet. And in today's session, we would be looking at uh, an important topic on the SAP Web IDE, right? And the topic would be to understand how do we configure Web IDE for OData service. And you would also be looking at understanding some technicalities of configuration. And it is also see if we would be able to come up with an auth in service URL, right? So now to begin with, the first thing that we've got to understand is there are two versions of SAP Web ID that's available for us. The first one being the older version and the second one being the newer variant, right? So both these versions that we have, we'll just take a look at them. Uh, but then the most important thing would be to understand how to configure an SAP Web ID, all right? So when you, this is how the screen looks like, your configuration screen where you have to you know, give the destinations of your data service all right so let's just go to the web id screen and we can you know just see how the web id looks like so yeah this is the older variant of web id and this is the newer variant of the web id so you'd be able to see a small difference in the url that would be web id cp followed by your number and here it is web id followed by your number now this web id the older variant it is giving a very clear message asking all of us to migrate to the newer variant before December 31st, right? And it says, if you don't do it, your projects might be at risk. So it's asking us to make sure that all your projects are migrated into the SAP Web IDE full stack before December 31st, right? Now, so how do you configure your Web IDE is the question. So when you want to configure your Web IDE, you click on this home button here. And when you click on this home button, you would be able to see the SAP Cloud Platform Cockpit. Now, when you open this Cloud Platform Cockpit here, we would be able to see all the connections that are required for us in order to you know, go ahead and configure your service. So in the connections tab, you would be having your destinations. You can just come here. And when you go to your destinations, you have a new destination which you could select. Now, when you go to a new destination, this is what you would be having a name, type, description, URL, proxy type, authentication, etc., etc. Now you can select all what is required and all what is not required for you to you know, establish a service. Here you would be having HTTP, HTTPS, mail, RFC, and all this. In the proxy type, you would be having internet and on-premise. On-premise is used whenever you're using something in the office or inside your organization not beyond that and authentication also you have different variants you have app to sso basic authentication no authentication at all and you have different variants and then you can also add new properties by clicking on this button you you have a huge variant of properties some are of boolean value like uh, web id enabled this would always be a true or a false right and then you would be having sap client sap additional data web id system Web ID, usage, yeah, you would be having a lot of them here. You can just select. Now, when you take a look at what I've done, I have given a Web ID enabled true. My service Web ID system would be North Wind because that is where I would be extracting data from for you know whenever I want to test a service, and then I would be using Web ID usage, which would be for my OData general services. All right. Apart from this, whenever you're creating a project, we've seen how, how, how a project structuring happens when you create a project in Web IDE, you would be having neoapp.json. Now this file, which we talked about, this is a very important file, which is in JSON format. As the name goes, it's neoapp.json. Now here you would be having entries of multiple configuration keys. Now to understand this, you have something called as route, which would be your key. And here inside the route, you would be defining an array of resource objects. Uh, like, you know, you, your destinations can be configured. You can give a path, you can give a target. And yeah, you can, yeah, and, and this can take multiple entries. Now that's the best thing. So we'll just take a look at all what I'm talking about on the web IDE platform directly. So yeah, here it is. We've seen how to configure a destination. Now this is my destination configured. Let me just cancel this. Yes, done. Now this is my destination, which is configured. You can just try yours. All right. Now, once I'm done with that, I would like to go back to my web IDE. Now here I have different options to create a project from. All right. Now I can create a project from wherever I wish. 
So let's first see if my OData service is configured or not, as that would be the step one. Now, in order to begin with that, I would go ahead, click on new, and I would work on a new project from template. And when you do this, you have a huge, so you have a huge variant your options, or you know you have a plethora of choices to select from. You have a Fiori work list application, UI5 application, list report application, Fiori master detail. Yeah, you have a broad range of choice to choose from. Now I would be selecting the work list application. You can enter, you know, this you, you can enter the details here, the project name, title would be test one. And my namespace would be demo, right? Now go to my next. Here I would be using my service URL because that's been mentioned. The URL would be not when O data service, and here I would have to enter the uh, relative URL. All right, so let me do that. We we two not when. Not when once again dot service right now once you're done entering the relative path you can always test your service here and you would be able to see your service ideally to pop up okay let's do that once again and see what's going wrong So this would be my system and my relative URL would be slash v2 slash not win slash not win dot svc Great, so we have something, right? So this is what you would be having. Uh, it, 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 it was not a capital V, it was a small V. I think that's where I went wrong. So these are your entity sets available within which you know you would be able to see your key field and you know all the stuff related to your project, your data service of the customers, and you know customer ID would be my key field. So yeah, you can you know basically make a choice, and I'm now able to see all my data services, right? So, which means that my OData service is configured. Now, when you go ahead and you create a new project, right, you would be able to see a new app.json. Now, this happens whenever you create a file. Here, I have a new app.json. I would be having another new app.json here. And it should be here as well, new app. So, yeah, new app basically is a part of each and every project. And inside new app, as I was talking about, routes is your keyword this word you do this using routes key and defining an array of resource objects so resource objects are defined inside the routes so it would be a path target type name entry path and description and just to cross verify that's exactly what we've taken here as well the path is a data bind with slash name then i have targets and i have defined my type and name to be destination and not win and then my description would be the name so yeah, this is how you can also add an entry in neoapp.json. And if you're able to see, neoapp.json has multiple entries. Now this is my first entry. This would be my second from line number 12, 12 to line number 20, right? And then this is my third. So yes, basically to be very short, sweet and precise, in neoapp.json, you can give, you can basically configure n number of destinations that are required for your application to be working or you know that's required for your application to be up and running so i hope you have been able to understand let's just you know take a quick walk through once again so whenever you want to create an application you always would have to configure your own data service and this is where you configure in the destinations in your connectivity tab you can just click on new destination create a or data service established and once it's done you can always create a project and test your raw data before you directly create a project if your raw data is up and active or not with new you can just select project from template i've been selecting a work list give all the you know details like abc this would be abac and this would be some ads now when you click on next 
and when you give a service url you, your, your, not, your, your system should be you know popping up here and you should also be able to enter your relative url here after which you can always test your service right so it would be not to end in my case dot svc now i can always go ahead and test my service and i should be able to see my entire service population populating here so yeah that's the way you configure your odata with your eclipse web id so i hope you've had some learning and i hope you've learned something new uh, do stay subscribed to this channel as we've got a lot yet be exchanged between us and our parts we still have you know a lot to check out on sap web id we'll see how to create a view using web id we'll also have to check how and what are the differences between the older variant and the newer variant of sap web id we have a lot of features on board like uh, you have storyboard you have uh, automatic routing you have a lot of other features which we would be looking in the upcoming videos so yeah do stay subscribed to this channel as we have a lot yet to be exchanged between us and Coming to uh, most of the videos on ABAP, all, almost all the videos would have the link of the blog right in the description below. So if you want to access the blog, uh, which is uh, you know uh, the topic of the, the video or the session, you can always go into the description session and check out the blog as well. So thanks a lot. Do share and do spread the word if you feel that this is helpful. Thank you for watching. Have a great day out there.